All right. Happy Saturday, although it is coming to a close. And that means that the weekend is ever more closer to being over. And I am not looking forward to another work week. But um, I am looking forward to sharing this name with you that has been on my mind and one that I feel is probably one of the more vital ones, I would say, to really utilize in our lives. We are living in the last days and it is our time now to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this name, if we will utilize this attribute of Christ in our lives, it will help us to be more prepared for that glorious and wonderful day. The name comes from Psalm 70. And the name of it, the name for Jesus is Deliverer. And the reason why I say it's very important that we utilize this one is because, one, this attribute was described in the Lord's Prayer. Jesus Christ specified that this name be used. He didn't use the name, but he used deliver in his prayer when he said, um, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He wants us to know that it is important for us to pray that we are delivered from evil, that we are delivered from sin. And the reason why it's very important to start utilizing this name is because we are living in the day that Isaiah foresaw, foresaw where good is called evil and evil is called good. We are living in a day similar to Babylon and the great Roman Empire where sin is running rampant. And we are living in a sin-saturated world. And it's important for us to know what is truly good and what is truly evil. As a deliverer, the Lord knows what is good and what is evil. He can teach us these things if we will ask him. It is important for us to not ask social media, politicians, and celebrities because many of them are indulging in the things which are evil to the Lord. There are many who will say, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Nevertheless, fear God. And they specify many things that are evil, but they say it's there's no harm in it. There's no harm in hurting your body or indulging in manipulating others. It's there's no there's no real harm in it. You only have this life, live it to the fullest. And those who say nevertheless fear God, they often add in saying if we are in the wrong God will beat us with a few stripes. He'll forgive us afterwards. He justifies in committing little sins. There's nothing wrong with it. And that's not true, actually. The Lord said to the prophet Joseph Smith that he cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. So it's important for us to try to have that same mentality if we are wanting to be like Jesus. And that can only come if we are open to seeing things as they really are. And I want to encourage you to really pull back from the views of social media and what politicians and celebrities say. There are some that will be correct and saying what and speaking out against the evils in the world but i would say we are more saturated with the lies of things that are fine well people saying it's fine to do the things which god says are abominable and immoral and it's important that we truly truly have the prayer that is written in psalm 70 it says make haste O God to deliver me make haste to help me O Lord 
Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me. O Lord, thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tearing. I hope that we can all find the courage to not participate in the things which are evil to the Lord. We want, he wants us to live with him. And if we participate and are seeking to do the things which are evil in his sight, we will become unclean and no unclean thing can enter into the kingdom of heaven. No unclean thing can dwell with God because if he, if we are unclean and he lets us in, he then becomes unclean as well, which is not an easy thing to easy thing to think about because we all make mistakes every individual is with the, is a sinner the only one who wasn't was Jesus Christ but because of his atonement and his suffering and death he has made it where we can be forgiven of the things that we do wrong but we need to understand that God will deliver us from our sins but he cannot deliver us if we are in our sins. The, the meaning between those two things is delivering us from our sins are the ones that deliver us from our sins means that he will deliver us from the things that we don't want to be participating in. He will help us have the strength to overcome them. And if we fall, he will forgive us and then he will help us to know what we can do to be better. If we are living in our sins, that means that we are seeking for it. We don't want to change and we're not willing to make any effort to change. The Lord will give us opportunities all day long. It's up to us to want to choose to do that. And I know it's an interesting thing to think about because why would we choose to do something that we don't want to do? The human body <laughs> is all about wanting to satisfy certain urges and needs, and sometimes it gets the better of us. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, the Lord said to his disciples, who he had asked to stay awake while he suffered in the garden. Those those fine apostles wanted to be there for the Lord, but that natural tendency of the natural man got the better of them. And King Benjamin talks about how we can overcome the natural man, and it is through the atonement of Christ the Lord. We need to be submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to do all things that the Lord seeth fit for us to do. It's not an easy thing. It is a step-by-step -step process. But the question is, are you personally seeking to be more humble, to be more patient, to be more submissive to the Lord? Depending on how you answer that question can really be the indication on are you living in your sins or are you seeking to be delivered from them? That's my encouragement for you to think about. I need to think about that on many individual instances in my life. I am not exempt. I am not perfect. But I want to become perfect in Christ. And I want you to be perfect in him too. Because I know that he has the power to deliver us and to free us from all that we are faced with. He delivered the Israelites from Egypt. And he brought them over the Red Sea. He can part the many waters. He can help us overcome any mountain. No matter how difficult we may think it is, it is not impossible with him. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.